What is up everyone? My name is Michael Pohl with Trek on the Air and this is my 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Limited. Uh, today we're going to be showing the ham radio install on it. So let's go take a look. All right, so like I said, this is a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. It's a limited trim, uh, slightly modified, nothing crazy. Um, but one of the comments I get asked about all the time is what does the ham radio install look like on this or radio install in general? Um, you do the same thing with a CB radio, same thing with a GMRS radio, MERS radio, whatever type of radio you're looking to install. Um, it's not a one size fit all, it'll depend a little bit on the pieces, but this is how I did it and you can definitely copy this with pretty much most radios. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look in the driver's seat. Sorry, the car's a little crowded. I'm out camping right now and I've packed up, but this is where the faceplate is. So this is the faceplate to my Yaesu FTM 400, um, and I've got it mounted with a RAM mount uh, screwed in here. It originally was just the radio. Uh, I eventually added the scan gauge, so I have this little splitter back here, but um, yeah. So this is the Yaesu FTM 400 faceplate. The cable for this comes out here, tucks into the trim, goes all the way down the door sill, um, all the way this way and pops out right here. I really need to do something better. I wanna run it under the carpet eventually, and sorry for the trash, this car is a mess. Um, but it pops out right here. Eventually I would like to run it under the carpet, um, but for right now, it's there. I probably should put some covering or something on it, but that's effort. So uh, it's been working fine for a few years, haven't bothered to change it. So again, faceplate here. Uh, the microphone I have down here in the footwell. Um, this is where I like it. I don't put my knee here or anything, so I know some people complain about that, but um, this is what I've got. It's the hand mic for it, and then it's this magne magnetic mic. Had it for a few years. Um, it's extremely overpriced. These are like 50 bucks, but I love it. It's great. It's great when I'm off-roading. I just throw it on here. Um, I don't have to worry about it. It just is there. I don't have to worry about clipping it or whatever else. So um, doesn't fall off when I'm off-roading. If I want to get rid of it, I just pull it. I can leave it. Um, yeah, great, great for it. They are a little pricey, but it's just kind of what it is at the end of the day. Um, that I have plugged in down here in the center console. Let me get out of the car. It'll be a little easier to show. Excellent, hit the pause button. Um, but I've got it tucked under here, a little bit of an extension cable. I was originally gonna put like a little plug here, like a bulkhead fitting somewhere over here, and I could just plug the hand mic in and out, but I don't take the hand mic out as much as I thought I would, so I never bothered to do it. I have one, it's sitting at home, but um, I leave the microphone plugged in pretty much the whole time. So, and that both run, both that and the headrest eventually, or the head unit eventually come out to back on the center console there, and let's jump over that way. Again, I've been camping, so I'm pretty loaded up here, but both of those cables come through the center console here and out the side. I've got it up towards the front of the seat here, and my radio pretty much is down under the seat. So you can also see the coax and the power come here, uh, and we'll go over those in a second. So I've got the radio. It's very unorganized, but it works for me. Um, Again, the control cables and the microphone cable are over here. This is just mounted to a piece of like one by eight. It sits in the groove of the car there, so it doesn't slide around. Um, this is the speaker cable. This runs up to the side here, up the trim, and up to the dashboard. Um, you can kind of see on the center there. Um, let me overlay some B-roll because I realized I forgot to show that when I was sitting in the front seat. But um, I do want to move that speaker, actually, now I'm thinking about it. My wife complains all the time that she can't see the uh, temperatures because that's the screen that it blocks. I can see it just fine from the driver's seat, but in the passenger seat, you can't see what you're adjusting on the thermostat, so she doesn't like that. So I need to move it. Eventually, I want to put it on the headrest back here. I just haven't done it yet. So, And then, yeah, I've got Anderson power poles here, wired. Uh, it's fused as well. It's also fused up at the battery. Um, I do have a splitter here in case I want to run something else. And then I also have this automatic power on off um, by APRS World. Um, it's just like a relay and it's adjustable. So it works based off the voltage. And basically the way this works um, is once the alternator turns on, it ups the voltage of the battery because uh, now it's charging. And so this turns the radio on automatically. So my radio comes on and off with the key. Um, and then once the voltage drops below a certain point, you can have it set to either turn off instantly 
or turn off on a delay. So my alternator cycles on and off. So I have it on, I think a 20 minute delay. Um, and I haven't had an issue with it every now and then if I'm sitting in a parking lot, um, it'll turn off randomly because the alternator doesn't need to run that often. Um, but when I'm driving and off-roading and doing whatever, I don't usually have an issue. Sometimes if I'm off-roading and I know I'm going to be using it pretty heavily, I just override it because sometimes we sit. If I'm with a group, we might be sitting or I might get out to flag someone and get back in and my radio's off. Um, so yeah, I just kind of leave it um, here. But for day-to-day -day driving around town commuting, this works great. It turns on um, as soon as I get in the car. And then once I get out of the car, I don't bother turning the radio off. I just leave it. 10, 20 minutes later, it shuts off. So, um, really like this, really worth it. Uh, and that's kind of what I've got for power here. Again, a little bit of a mess. Um, then I've got coax ran here. I'll go over that in a minute, but I want to show the power first. So again, I've got power here. Uh, it's running in the trim through the dashboard. Um, I pulled the, uh, the, why can I not think of the word, the uh, glove box out and pushed it underneath the radio and it goes into the engine bay over underneath the steering column. Um, let me pop the hood for that. All right, and so you can kind of see it right there. You can see the little bit of red. Uh, there's a gasket there that Subaru has that a lot of the other stuff goes through and uh, it kind of lifts up a little bit. So. Power cables coming through there. I've got it wire loomed up into this rat's nest here in the corner. Um, and then it kind of slides through here and I have it going straight to the battery. I don't tie it into my aux beam uh, like switch because um, I use the relay to turn it on and off. And I wanted the radio to be able to be on when the car is off and the aux beam is only on and only supplies power when the vehicle is on. So um, that was something I wanted. So it goes straight to the battery. I don't remember which fuse it is. It's probably this one or this one because those are the two 10 gauge ones. Um, and this is 10 gauge wire running all the way back to it, 12 volt wire. So, um, yep, just tied in here, uh, just in the little part there. So nothing fancy, um, just back down. Uh, nothing fancy, but that's what's powering it. And uh, like I said, I've got that running back with 10 gauge wire, so. Now, as far as the antennas go, um, I have NMO mounts drilled into the back of the car on the roof. So uh, this one is always a pain in the butt because I never use this one. So it always takes a second to screw off. So I have two of these. Um, I really like these. These are the 3 8 NMO mount, not the 3 quarter inch. So it only takes a 3 8 inch hole, uh, which is about the center pin here. Um, and then underneath it, I actually use a fender washer. So I use a 3 8 inch by 2 inch fender washer to clamp down on it. So this thing is super strong. The fender washer sticks out about 2 inches. It's wider than the NMO mount itself. And it sandwiches down with this top piece here. So super strong, never had an issue with it. Um, I have these exact same mounts on my old car that my parents still have. They're just capped off now, obviously, but those have been going for like six or seven years, no problem. Um, and then, yeah, I've had them in this car uh, pretty much since I bought it. I drilled the roof of this car a month or two after I bought it brand new off the lot um, and it works great. So again, NMO mount over here in the back corner. So now the reason I chose this, I debated pretty heavily. I do have a sunroof on this car, not because I wanted it, but because that was the one that was available. And when I bought this car, uh, there was like a six month wait and they happened to get one in early. And so um, I had already ordered one, um, but it was this exact same spec, just didn't have the sunroof. Um, this one came in early and asked me if I wanted it. I said, sure, because um, my other car was starting to die. So I, I needed a car sooner than later, um, but it was back. 2021-ish, 2022-ish, when cars were hard to get um, and used cars were selling more than new cars and I paid MSRP for this. So um, I wanted originally to put an antenna smack dab in the center. I really only use one antenna um, most of the time. When I do use a second antenna, a lot of times I throw a mag mount up because I use a tall like 17 foot whip and I've used it on these before, but I just don't want anything to leak. So um, realistically, it's probably strong. It's probably, probably freaking out for no reason about it. But um, I usually just throw a mag mount up just in case. Worst case, if the wind blows it over, it knocks over and I don't have to worry about it like breaking anything. So, um, but I also wanted to be able to use a roof rack. Uh, I'm not using it as much this trip, but a lot of trips, especially longer trips, the cross truck is a small car. I can't fit everything or I keep the propane, the firewood, et cetera, et cetera, up on the roof rack. So it's out of the main car. Um, so, I do use the roof rack quite a bit. I don't use it day to day. It comes off when I'm commuting around town. Um, but 
I needed to be able to put a roof rack up. So this roof rack actually does sit a little bit farther forward than most people typically do it um, because I wanted to have space for the NMO antenna mounts. Um, the other thing, the other reason why I put them here is because I didn't have to drop the headliner for it. So um, I was able to kind of pull some of the trim up here and basically drill the hole right about here. And I just had to pull a couple of pieces and I could work my hand underneath it. I didn't want to drop the headliner, especially in this car. Uh, it was brand new, didn't want to damage it, didn't want to deal with it. It's a lot of effort. So um, in my dad's truck, we have one drilled right in the center of the roof. And what we actually did for his truck, just so we didn't have to drop it, he also had a sunroof, is we took the center dome light out, popped the dome light out, put the sunroof all the way back so we can measure it and make sure um, that it cleared. And then we just drilled a hole. And uh, so that's how we got to his without dropping the headliner. But for me, my sunroof sits right where the, uh, the light is. So that also was not an option for me. But um, again, not a one size fits all by any means, um, but yeah. And then as far as antenna, this is the antenna that lives on my car 99% of the time. It is a half wave signal stock. Um, by I believe it's hamstudy.org is the company that makes these, um, if I remember right. I absolutely love this thing. Um, let's see if we can get it where you can actually see it. They're super bendy, um, so you can bend this, you know, pretty much all the way down. Um, they've got really good uh, durability. This antenna I've had for about a year. Um, I broke my last one, not to any fault of signal stock. Um, I was flying down a highway going like 65, and I just so happened to clip a tree branch uh, that hit right in the center here and it broke this plastic piece in half. The metal didn't break. I found the top piece, it didn't break, but it broke this plastic piece smack in half. And at the end of the day, this is plastic. Um, it's what it is. Um, I ended up just buying a new one. So I've had this one for about a year, but I've had these pretty much since they came out. Um, I know they stopped selling them at a point, but again, I absolutely love them. So. Um, yeah, that's what I do. The NMO mount over on this side also goes underneath the driver's seat. I just realized, I don't know if I actually said that or not, but the coax runs underneath the driver's seat. That one runs underneath the passenger seat. Um, that way, if I want to set up a second, like dedicated GMRS radio or something, um, I've thought about putting Meshtastic or something in here. I can do that and just plop it under the passenger seat and, or the driver's seat and not have to worry about space underneath the passenger seat. But yeah, so that is the ham radio install in my 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like ham radio, if you like camping, like outdoor stuff, uh, I'd love if you considered subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.